Lab tests are essential to diagnosing myeloma and monitoring how well treatments are working. This video will talk about the blood, urine, and bone marrow tests the healthcare team uses to diagnose and monitor patients with myeloma. Tests like the CBC, CMP, LDH, beta-2 microglobulin, electrophoresis, serum-free light chain assay, FISH, and MRI, CT, and PET scans. We'll also describe what these tests measure and what the results mean. Multiple myeloma is a blood cancer that develops in the bone marrow, which is the spongy tissue in the center of many bones and is where blood cells are produced. In multiple myeloma, a type of cell in the immune system called a plasma cell transforms into a cancerous myeloma cell. Normal plasma cells produce antibodies, which are proteins that help the body fight infections. Antibodies are made up of two parts, heavy chains and light chains. In myeloma, cancerous plasma cells, that is myeloma cells, grow so fast that they crowd out normal plasma cells and interfere with the production of normal blood cells. Also, myeloma cells produce antibodies that are defective or incomplete. The defective antibodies are called M proteins and the incomplete antibodies are called light chains. These antibodies cannot fight infection but they can help doctors diagnose myeloma and determine how well your treatment is working. Let's look at some of these tests now. Blood tests can tell the healthcare team a great deal about the status of a patient's myeloma. The complete blood count, or CBC, reveals the numbers of different types of blood cells. A low red blood cell count, also called anemia, is common in myeloma, and this can cause fatigue. Doctors determine if a patient has anemia by measuring the amount of hemoglobin in the blood. Hemoglobin is a protein carried by red blood cells. Its job is to transport oxygen throughout the body. When the level of hemoglobin is low, approximately 8 grams per deciliter, it means that there are not enough red blood cells in the blood, which is an indication that myeloma cells are interfering with blood cell production in the bone marrow. A low level of a type of white blood cell called a neutrophil is referred to as neutropenia, and this condition makes infections harder to fight. A low platelet count called thrombocytopenia may cause a cut to bleed for a long time because blood cannot clot properly. As myeloma cells grow and crowd out the normal blood cells in the bone marrow, the surrounding bone starts to break down. The damaged bones leak calcium into the blood, which, in addition to the M proteins released by the myeloma cells, can overwork and possibly damage your kidneys, which are responsible for filtering the blood. Therefore, tests that measure the levels of materials in the blood are important to assessing how healthy your kidneys and bones are, which in turn can help your doctor determine how severe your myeloma is. The Complete Metabolic Panel, or CMP, is just such a test. For instance, if the CMP reveals that there is too much calcium in the blood, a condition known as hypercalcemia, it could be an early sign that you may be at risk for fractures and other bone-related complications. Or if the CMP shows high levels of creatinine or urea nitrogen, which are waste products normally produced by the body, it could be an early sign of kidney disease. Another blood test involves looking for beta-2 microglobulin, a protein released by myeloma cells. High levels of beta-2 microglobulin are also a sign of kidney disease and can indicate myeloma severity. Another important blood test measures the amount of a normal enzyme in your body called lactate dehydrogenase or LDH. If the LDH value is high, that means that myeloma cells are rapidly dividing and is a sign of aggressive disease. The LDH value, along with other blood test results generated at diagnosis, helps your doctor stage myeloma and determine your prognosis, that is, the course and outcome of your disease. Blood tests are also used to check for the presence and amount of M protein, the protein produced by myeloma cells. This is done by a process called serum protein electrophoresis, or SPEP, which uses an electrical charge to separate the components of a sample. A high M protein level, referred to as an M spike, indicates that a patient has myeloma. With treatment, the M protein levels usually fall. 
In a patient that has already received treatment, an increase in the M protein level can be a sign that the myeloma has relapsed. For this reason, M protein levels in the blood are useful in monitoring how effective your treatment has been. However, some percent of myeloma patients do not produce M protein. Instead, they only produce the smaller light chains of the antibodies. Light chains are not detected by SPEP, so a different test is needed. Fortunately, a newer test called a serum-free light chain assay can detect light chains in a blood sample. This test measures the level of two different types of light chains, called kappa and lambda. Normally, a person without myeloma has roughly the same number of kappa and lambda light chains, so a serum-free light chain assay would show a ratio of 1. Myeloma cells mainly produce only one type of light chain, so when your results show a higher level of either kappa or lambda light chains, this may mean that you have myeloma. Because the level of one light chain will be higher, the ratio between them will be abnormal. During treatment, the level of the light chain made by the myeloma cells decreases, and the ratio of kappa and lambda light chains should return to normal, so the serum-free light chain assay is also a good way to monitor how effective your treatment is. Another type of electrophoresis, urine protein electrophoresis, also determines the presence and types of free light chains, this time from your urine. The urine electrophoresis is usually checked on a 24-hour urine collection. Along with blood and urine tests, bone marrow tests and imaging tests can provide valuable information about the status of your myeloma. A bone marrow biopsy involves inserting a needle into your hip bone to extract a small amount of bone marrow for analysis. Bone marrow samples are tested to measure how many myeloma cells are in the marrow. A level over 10% may indicate that you have myeloma. Fluorescence in situ hybridization, or FISH, checks for changes in your chromosomes, which are the structures in your cells that contain your genetic information or DNA. The FISH test only looks at abnormalities in the myeloma cells. Changes associated with multiple myeloma include translocations, which is when pieces of different chromosomes swap places, deletions, which is when a piece of a chromosome is missing, and hyperdiploidy, which is when the number of chromosomes is higher than normal. Another genetic test conducted on marrow samples is genomic sequencing, which looks closer at the DNA to determine whether any changes, also known as mutations, are present. Results of this test can help predict how long a patient will remain in remission before his or her myeloma gets worse or relapses, and can also help the doctor select the best treatment. Bone marrow biopsy testing is always done at the time of diagnosis and might be repeated when the myeloma relapses. As multiple myeloma gets worse, it causes small holes called lytic lesions to develop in the bones. A number of imaging tests are used to locate and measure lytic lesions, including X-ray, magnetic resonance imaging or MRI, computed tomography or CAT scan, and positron emission tomography or PET scan. Some of these tests can also detect multiple myeloma that is outside the bone marrow. Multiple myeloma affects many parts of the body, including the blood, bone, and kidneys. All of the tests discussed in this video can help your healthcare team detect myeloma, prevent or decrease damage to your bones and kidneys, and measure how well you respond to your treatment. Understanding what the different tests are for and knowing what the results mean can help you talk to your doctor and take an active role in managing your care.